Woo, 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 in the new jail. Do you know who I am? Thriller. City. You might need a theme song for your shit. Check this out. Ah, Turn this out. Ah, ah, Look at shit. Ah, See, then jackthriller.com. We creep in. Snoop Dogg to the left. Jack Thriller to the right. Jackthriller.com. Do it all night. Hit the website. Hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get hooked up with a bad super bitch. In the new Jack City, yeah. That's my friend. Go find the last time before I make That's my friend. <laughs> and welcome back to New Jack Thriller City. Man, yo, I am excited right now, man. T Rex, you, you, you know I'm excited, right? Whenever we have some R&B shit going on in here, you put me in nasty R&B mode, you know what I'm saying? Because low-key, you, you know I'm an R&B thug, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bruh, gospel sex symbol. The gospel sex symbol, man. God know my heart and my ding a -ling. you hear me? Let's get it, let's get it, baby. Come on. Brace yourself. Going to hell, goddamn, on a full scholarship. The Lord your shepherd. You hear me? He know what you want. He know what I want. Please give it to me. Come on. Come on. Hey, so we about to get this show started, but before I do that, I got to introduce my co-pilots today. All right, man, my cousin, blood cousin, I always got to do that. Uh, he's the godfather of the crank movement. Y'all give it up for Lil Playboy. Lil Playboy. Yeah. All right. One thing about it, podcast. Y'all give it up for uh, Money Talks. <laughs> And this is my favorite girl in the world. She got her own radio station, uh, 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 TKO Radio. Y'all give it up for Chelsea Speaks. Hey, y'all. <laughs> and today, we, we got a, a, a legend. I thought he was an Atlanta legend, but he is a Nashville, you know, Tennessee legend. Nashville, Tennessee legend. But he repped the A-Town. We claiming him. Fuck that. <laughs> I like to call him the, um, the, the, the R&B Mr. Brown. <laughs> the only Mr. Brown, y'all give it up for the one, the only, man, the lead singer Ay! of Phil, Lil G. Yeah! Yeah! Come on now. Yeah, come, come on, on. Lose good. control, goddamn. Come on, good. Lose control in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, how you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good, man. Parking a lot of pimping trying to catch that ride. You know how come it is. Come on, bro. <laughs> now, what, what, what Big Red say? You, you, you sing, you dance. What is it that you don't do? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> oh. That, that, that bullshit. Come on now. <laughs> hey, bro. Like, I'm really excited to have you on the show, man. Like I said, I thought you weren't coming. I ain't going to even front. Huh? I thought you weren't coming, man. Yeah, uh, I you, wouldn't disrespect you like that, bro. In the name of Jesus. I was praying on it. <laughs> I was praying about it. I asked him, you know what I'm saying, to deliver you, and that's what he did. And you came in here shining, man. You know what I'm saying? Got you, your R&B. You came in r and b out today. <laughs> Got your school clothes on. Got my school clothes on. Got your school clothes. So you know, it's a, I want to I want to see everybody's school clothes for this episode real quick. Uh, Playboy, you already know what time it is. Yeah. Lead yeah. us off. Let me pop it up. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That was something cool, light. Um, let's start off with the kicks. These are some um, hunter boots. Uh, I got a quick story about these, right? Okay. They about $220. I literally just bought them from Marshalls yesterday for 60 bucks. Ooh. Shout out to Marshalls. And these are a woman's shoe. Only, only a real one can make a woman's shoe look Thanks. this good, right? What do you say? Right. They are man's shoe now. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else pretty light. Um, you know, uh, your regular Nike sweatsuit, um, uh, pants, hoodie. That's what, a, uh, that's what it is for today. Nike Hunter boots. We in there. All right, all right. I love it. I love it. All right, Chelsea, show them your school clothes. Oh, hi, guys. All right, now. All right, all right. Did they like Sandra off 227? So, y'all know I, we? <laughs> I love to support black businesses. So, the skirt is Shop 11.9. The top is uh, HM. Women Are Dope is my brand. And I love my sneakers. There you go. That's what's up. Amani. <laughs> Okay, let me get myself together. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. And a woman. Real simple. Damn. It ain't nothing simple about that. <laughs> so, the boots. That's complex. <laughs> boots, I think, are. <laughs> I don't even know. We're, I think these are 
Steve Madden. The tights, the tights are um, Naked Wardrobe. The skirt is Pretty Little Thing, I'm sure. Yeah, and yes it is. And the top is Forever 21. Yeah. Come on now. Hey, man. Lil G, uh, show him your, your school clothes, man. You let me speak. I don't know what to say. Bow, bow, Okay. Ooh. Damn. Yeah. Man, energy. man teach me how to dress. <laughs> man, what, what you call this right here? Because check this out. When you're going, you're getting ready for shows and stuff. You know, this is one of the most major parts of being getting inside superstar mode. Man, put us on some game real quick. Well, see, what had happened was with this, see, I just put on some put em ons you know what I'm saying? I just picked out some things out of my closet, you know, I, well, this is a special shirt, because as you can see, it says the Lorraine Motel. Yeah. That's with Martin Luther King. That's right. Okay. So, you know, they did a play, you know, the Lorraine, mm -hmm. you know, the Inkwell Productions, Inkwell Productions, so I went to that, you know, got this, so I copped that. Man, I can I can tell I can't the only thing that I know with the name brand of me is, is my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the J's, you know, but hey. I just you know, throw on this little satin jacket for you to kind of spruce it up a little bit. <laughs> you know, show y'all some props, you know, give y'all y'all's props for doing what you're doing over here. So showing mad respect for y'all, you know. Yeah, yeah 100 percent man. <laughs> and a little camo. What, the new the, the new people call it putting that shit on. Put that shit on. Put and you put that shit on. on. Put that shit on. Exactly. Put That's on. what's up. That's what's up, man. Let's get right on in there. Okay. Chelsea, come out swing. Listen, Lil G, you mm -hmm. are quite the the epic, I mean, legendary creative that you are. But more than anything, you are an instrumentalist. You're a musician. Mm -hmm. Out of all the musical instruments you play, which one is your favorite? And, hold on, how many instruments do we play? It's crazy. I, you play instruments? Yes, sir. Uh, That's his big passion. I play in lieu of 13 instruments. Oh, 13. Wow. Yeah. 13. He is on the marketing band. Woo, 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 woo. No. <laughs> so, uh, my favorite mm -hmm. uh, has got to be the guitar. Really? Yeah. Why the guitar? It's a tie between the guitar and the piano, but. I'm going to give the edge to guitar. Okay. Um, Prince was like my musical mentor. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. You so know? that's what And I though he played everything too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, but some of, some about that guitar, I just get a feeling when I'm out there in front, mm -hmm. you know, with my wireless pack on. Okay. And I can walk around the room with my guitar and just shred if I want to, mm. as long as I want to and things like that, you know, to get my musician rocks off. Okay, okay, okay. Do yeah. you think you have an alter ego or is little G your alter ego? Um now, you know, it's little G, you know, from Silk and everything. Mm -hmm. Now my alter ego is G seven. Talk to us about G seven, because I know the flights and all that, but why G seven? You got something up under there? Mm-hmm. Okay. G is the seventh letter of the alphabet. Okay. I'm the seventh child. Okay. I'm the baby in my my siblings, okay. and uh, seven is the number of completion. Mm -hmm. So I put all those together to come up with G7. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, my name for my new project, G7 No Parole. Ooh. I'm sentenced to life in music. I ain't getting out. Okay, then. Like sentenced that. to life in music. Okay, married to the music. Okay. So, so I was doing a little research on you, and I thought it was highly interesting that you actually had the chance to perform with Dizzy Gillespie. A lot of people don't know that. Like, you've really been in this for a minute from your whole tenure at ten Tennessee State. But you played with Dizzy Gillespie. Like, talk to us about that. Yeah, it's my HBCU, Tennessee yes. State University. TSU. TSU Jazz Ensemble. Yes, sir. I was the piano player for the jazz band. And uh, Dizzy came to the school, man, uh, through Professor Prof. Kirk. Rest in, rest in heaven. Uh, he was the... Uh, director for the band, one of the directors for the band, and mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> everybody out there in Nashville, it's Tennessee would know what that's it? about, <laughs> oh, but anyway, yeah, so he came, man, and he was actually standing right there in front of me, man, I was a little nervous at first, you know, but then I got cool, and I said, no, nah, man, you, you can't be nervous, you got to shine, man, so mm -hmm. I just got into it, man, and did with it, and I, I saw the jaws popping out and everything <laughs> like that, but Hey, it was a wonderful experience, one I will never forget as a musician. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
Would you say that kind of set the standard for your whole performance as a musician, you being around such legendary people? Because you're an overall creative. You did theater. A lot of things people don't do that know that you do. So do you think that kind of helped you translate that into your musical composition style? Yeah, I, I believe so. You know, uh, going through my years in school, you know, and everything, because it was a God-given talent. Mm -hmm. You know, all the instruments I play and everything is God-given talent. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I couldn't tell you what I was playing. I could just listen to it, pick it out, you know, and, and play it wow. like that, yeah. Uh, and he blessed me with perfect pitch. Yes, he did. And all of that kind of thing. So, you know, it's just music has just been my life. You know, I just started when I was five years old around the house. My mama would clean up, you know, on Saturday mornings and she'd play all of her favorite records and all that kind of stuff. And so I just started singing to Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder, Asley Brothers. I bet you were so tearing it up. B.B. So, King and so on and so on and so on. So it was being nurtured into me, mm -hmm. you know, from the jump, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, went to church. You know, I was just going to say. When I was seven, mm -hmm. you know, I uh, sang with Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones. You God, did. God, you God, did. God, get out of here. Yes, he did. Yep. You was in it, in it. Mm -hmm. I was in it, man. I was on stage with James Cleveland, Shirley Caesar, and mm -hmm. Bobby Jones mm -hmm. in Cleveland, Ohio, at the age of eight years old at the Gospel Music Workshop. I saw that. I used to go to those workshops. <laughs> <laughs> so that's crazy, man. Yeah, so you was ordained to do this mm -hmm. from the kick ring. Yeah. Jesus and him told me you, you better get out there and do it. Okay. <laughs> I knew when I saw you at New Horizon in Mississippi performing, because I'm from Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. I saw you singing your heart out. So with that being said, what part of your spiritual journey kind of opened up and let you know that it's okay to do secular music because when you, when you grow up in the church I'm a pastor's daughter a lot of times they kind of be like nah you shouldn't sing this or that so what kind of freed you and allowed you to go ahead and step into the secular world I think what it was you know through my through my history you know going through school and everything you know I was playing secular music you know as well you know in school talent shows and all that kind of thing and everything and then uh, I became the church musician at my home church. Was you, you sleeping with all the ladies? Because you know church musicians Whoa. be. Oh no! I'm just. No, go I'm ahead. Just, uh, go ahead. I, I mean, if you want. I'm just. Is, is, so, that so, what is, they is say it, about church musicians? That was they say church musicians. <laughs> you know, have okay. a pretty flagrant selection. I'm. A, I'm. A, I get it. I just met mm -hmm. her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Uh, but go if you. Hey, you know what time it is. That's right, man. Jack Thriller's Beauty of the Week, hosted by Gigi McGuire. Show me these honeys. Come on, Gigi. Let's go. Who's coming with me? It's your girl, Gigi McGuire. And I am also known as Miss Show Me The Money for those of y'all who don't know. Okay. Today's Jack's Beauty of the Week is... I'm Juju. Juju. Hey, girl. Hey. Hi. Ooh. How you doing? Okay. God damn, Juju. Juju. How old are you, honey? Actually... My birthday's in two days, so Woo! I'm 30. You'll be 30. Yes. In two days, so. D dirty 30. We're, we're dirty 30. Dirty 30. I'm here for it. What are your birthday plans? Sleeping. Girl, you tired? I am tired. What about birthday sex? Ooh. I got to find a man first for that. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to take him up on that offer. <laughs> so, we're an Aquarius. Yes. Okay. And what my I'm sorry. And what's your hometown? Where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. What city? Or, okay, or it's town? It's real small. Yeah. Goldsboro. Goldsboro. It's like an hour away from Raleigh. Okay. Mm. Nothing, out there. Nothing out there. What brought you to Atlanta? Money. I know that's right. Mm. Good answer. Okay, let's get spicy. What's your sexual interest? We strictly dickly? We doing a little licky licky. What we doing? I do a little bit of everything. Oh! Okay. oh. Shiny thing once, you know. Okay, yeah. what about so twice? Would you consider yourself bi? Yes. All right. I buy it. <laughs> How much you go? What you doing? What we doing now? And um beyond a favorite position, because that's so basic, we're gonna go with what's your favorite sexual activity? I get my nipples set. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this is okay. crazy. This is crazy. I like sucking nipples. This is nuts. It's giving match made in heaven, if you ask me. <laughs> I got some matches on me. Let's go. <laughs> and some wax. Let's do it. You hear me? 
And I saw Kel Tay Tay's plays. So, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the 50 50 relationship? Well, I mean, I'm cool with that. I prefer, though, to be taken care of, but I'm cool with 50 50. Oh, well, let's do what you're cool with then. Let's do what you're cool with. <laughs> cool whips the one. <laughs> and um, how often have you or will you fake an orgasm? Oh, I'm not doing that. Never ever faked it. No, nah, I'll yawn. I might, you know, clap my hands. Okay. If you yawn, I'm gonna put something in your mouth now. If you yawn. <laughs> so so when in my the, tongue long. So in the event that That tongue long. What? Hold on. What? Real long. So will you eat the booty? <laughs> no comment. I'm I am definitely one to uh have a little anal fun pleasure play when so, it comes to to the bedroom. So you I'm, saying I'm here for it. GG, I can sit on your face. That's but what you you're saying. I cannot sit on my face. Okay. No, no. <laughs> okay, gotcha. You cannot sit on my face. So what about if I was on all fours? All fours is my face. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If I can get a man you can. on all fours, you can. Yeah. Ain't nobody trying to hear that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's end it on a high note. Where can the people find you? Um, at Magic City, actually. Come on, Magic. It's given. I'm alumni. Okay, I love yes. Juju. Uh, yes, I was wondering why you look so familiar. I am Gigi McGuire, Miss Shirley Gigi Money, Gigi the originator of the snack pack. Okay, that is me. That is totally yes. Oh I'm your sister. Oh! Oh! Look at oh! oh my god! Oh, yes. What is it giving? I was meant to be here today. Yes, Juju, Juju, what is it giving right now? <laughs> match made in heaven. Okay, it's giving match made Twin. in heaven. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It was nice meeting you. wanted to answer it. Go, go well, ahead. well, you know, they, they put those kind of stigmas, <laughs> you know, on the on some of the preachers uh -huh. and some of the well, deacons and, well. you know, and, and you know, uh, musicians and things <laughs> like that, you know. You got to lay hands. You know, so, uh, Jesus wept and I see why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, lose control. Now, where were we? What were so, we talking so about? So, your church background, you being free to go into the secular industry, what was a catalyst? When was your freeing point? I think it was, you know, singing with the, the marching band at Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. You know, I started doing that too. You know, I was traveling with them. And um, there was a guy in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, there was a really popular club, the Modern Era Club. Mm -hmm. People like Etta James and James Brown and a few, you know, a lot of the other people had been through that club, right? right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's been in existence that long. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was a band down there. And so uh, Michael Johnson, he was, he was the guy, he worked down there for mm -hmm. Mr. Sue. So he knew I was, you know, playing and everything and stuff like that. So he came and got me one day. He said, man, you know what? I want you to come on down, and I want you to try to audition, you know, for this band. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, cool, okay. you know. So I took my guitar down there. <laughs> you know, the band was up there. They was, you know, doing pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. it was rocking and everything. And so I did Kiss. Mm. Interesting choice. By uh, Prince. Prince, yes. Little did I know, you you remember the movie Cadillac Records? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. You know they call them headhunters? Yes. Well, I became a headhunter because at the end of that night, they ended up firing the guitar player mm -hmm. and told me I was the new member of the band. Mm. I felt so bad. <laughs> Because I was like, I didn't come down didn't come to do take that. nobody's place. I mean, if you wanted to add me to it, but what? Wow, but but you took that anyway, nigga's job. Neither here nor there. <laughs> Sue <City Bell. laughs> <laughs> You don't have to be rich to get in the bank. <laughs> Come on now. So, I think that was my, mm -hmm. you know, transition. But I was still a church musician. Wow. Sunday morning, so Friday and Saturday. 
Hey, what's up, man? You know what time it is. It's foodie call. Now, what a foodie call is, like I told you, that's when you take a girl a lot and she had no intentions of giving you some, but you didn't spend a lot of money. So today we got Gigi Maguire and we got another comeback because it's comeback season with Chef Torres. Yo, Gigi, tell us what Chef Torres got for us today. Show us the money. It's your girl, Gigi Maguire, Miss Show Me The Money, and it's a foodie call with Chef Torres. It's a foodie call with Chef Therese. And this is what we like to call crab rangoon. Rangoon. Okay. Roll that R. You got to roll that tongue. And from what I know about this dish is that it's sticky on the outside. Oh, shit. And white and creamy on the inside. Okay. Okay. So it's giving a perfect dish for a foodie call. What say you, Chef? I say the same. Most definitely, it's crispy. It's hard on the outside. Ooh. Like she said, sticky and hard on the outside. Nice and creamy, gooey, and just delectable. Absolutely. On the absolute. inside. Everything you want. Mm -hmm. So I definitely like it hard, and it's definitely going to be a little sticky after it pulls out. And I'm going to put it in my mouth, and then I'm going to have the white stuff. It's giving. It's, it's giving. It's I giving. But I'm still not going to give him none, okay, because this is a foodie call. And on a foodie call, he ain't getting no booty. Um, but, again, I might give a little tease for this one, too. Um, it's the sticky for me. I'm, I'm a sauce girl. Okay. I'm a sauce Very girl. Nice. I like it. I like it saucy. I like it wet. I like it covered. I like the lick. Okay. It's, yeah. it's really not about me, you is it? You had it right. You had it right. Okay. You know, you can lick the sauce off. You can bite it and let the filling just burst in your mouth. Oh, you like. yeah. You can get messy with it. Tuck that corner, tuck, you know, chef. You, need to. You, get, you can enjoy it any way you like, but it's going to be very enjoyable. That's for sure. Very enjoyable. Very enjoyable for the foodie call. Absolutely. How you feeling over there, Jack? Hey, you so nasty, and I just might do anything you ask me. Hey. My nature hard as steel. Is she for real? <laughs> hey, tell them how to follow this nigga. So, Chef, tell the people how they can find you. Better get up Instagram, Chef Therese, T-E-R-E-S, not with a Z. Not with a Z. And although we are here in the beautiful state of Georgia, the city of Atlanta, where the peaches are peaching, um, you travel as well, correct? I will fly, I will drive, I end up right at your doorstep. Okay. I don't care it's how like you get there. Hot, hard, and sticky for that ass. And very creamy. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Foodie Call. Singing and singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did the church feel about that? Did they turn their back on you and... Did it or they, it was like hey, you can't serve two masters? Right. Did you get that look that that talk? Well, you know, you had a couple of mothers mm -hmm. you know, to do that, but even the pastor, he didn't really really go there with me like that. Mm -hmm. He gave me my congratulations, you know, because he knew music was all in me, mm -hmm. you know. And then he, you know, I was kind of known as the the gig king in Nashville because. You know, uh, I was at a lot of churches, you know, and doing little secular gigs and stuff like that. You know, I had a little production deal with a guy from Famous Music Publishing, and I had recorded two songs, and those two songs was what I actually auditioned for Silk <laughs> in when I became the new lead singer for Silk. What were those two songs? Huh? What were those two songs? It's, uh, one was called A Rose Can Only Grow From The Rain. Okay. And uh, the fast one was called I Got A Thing. Okay. And these were your songs? Mm hmm You wrote those. You mm -hmm. did some originals for your audition. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's you epic. got some balls. Yes. <laughs> I was that, like, auditioning and being discovered. It was Keith Sweat, right? That Keith Sweat. Yeah, yep. y'all was young. Mm-hmm. Yep, we were very young. And they were already, you know, um, a group. Four-man group. And Keith was, yep, well, actually five. Mm. It was already five then? Wow. Once again. You oh, had him again, oh, again. Oh, again. You took somebody's spot again. 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 That's how. Look, ain't looking. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but the good thing about this situation is that he already knew it. Okay. Okay. You know, because uh, um, Keith had wanted a different sound mm -hmm. or whatever. So it was about eight of us that that uh, auditioned, and later on in life, I mean, it's got to be like maybe two or three years ago. I just found out that CeeLo Green was also one of them. Yeah. Wow. wow. You heard that, right? Yeah, I, de I definitely did. I was like, what? Hey, I, I think he still, he feel a way about it too, bro. <laughs> huh? I asked him, every, I, I asked him that like two times. And every time he looked at me and he was like, 
I think he still feel a way about you, bro. <laughs> Have y'all ever talked about this? Man, we yeah. We talked about it. We cool as a fan. Okay, man. cool. Yeah, matter of fact. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I can't say, <laughs> but you know, that's my dog. We 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 might be embarking upon some things. I would love. Okay, to man. See. I'm yeah. hoping and so, I'm praying. That would be amazing. I'm getting ready to take it right to him. I'm yeah. be like, hey, dog. Hey, let's do this thing. That's so, gonna be fire. So we're gonna see what happens. That's a okay. hell of a story right there, man. Don't quote me, but we're gonna see. No, what quote it. It's, it's, in, it's in there. God got this. But two or more again. This is right. gonna happen. Yeah, man. So my transition was pretty easy, mm -hmm. you know. So in that, you know, um, when I got to Tennessee State, I was in a program called the Enrose program, mm -hmm. and that was for business and engineering majors and computer science and stuff like that. And so. I had a meeting with the president, and I opted out <laughs> because I you had the bug. Yeah, I had to, I couldn't sit still. You know, I had that bug. So, and then I, I said, you know, why don't y'all open it up? Because there's more Black, Hispanic, and American Indian students that want to do more than that. Mm. You know, what about the people who want to do music? What about who wants to act? What about people who want to, you know, do? Some, there's some other industries out there and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I opted to go on and take my chances. Okay. Uh, thank God, you know, it worked out for me. So um, I became, uh, I changed my major to music with emphasis on piano and voice. Wow. So I even did opera. I saw that. So I did a couple of operas in, uh, in college and things like that. And so that's where I learned my preservation tactics, mm -hmm. you know, for my vocals. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people ask me that, you know, how you still, you know, doing like, I just remembered. Those practices that you learned in opera. He taught me back then, you know, how to preserve your voice and how to, where to bring it from and, you know, never bring it from your throat, you know, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. so majoring in um, music, like you said, with the piano and, and, and what you said, your voice, mm -hmm. you feel like college actually helped you in the long run in your career? Or you think it was just, you know, something that, because I know most people, they feel like college degrees don't mean nothing nowadays. But yeah. for you to actually, because we all want to be artists and creators, but for you to have a degree mm -hmm. that goes towards that, mm -hmm. what's your insight on that? Well, see, um, I think where it really helped me, it helped me to learn the theoretical part of music. Mm. You know. The but, nerd stuff. Yeah. The nerd stuff. About the money. Music. To all Everybody out here listening and watching, if you're a musician, singer, whatever, make sure you get theory. Mm -hmm. Because I don't care what you're putting together, even if you're putting together just a, a hip hop beat, mm -hmm. you know, you got to know meter, pentameter, mm -hmm. all of that kind of thing. Staccato. You got to uh -huh. know mm -hmm. staccato, legato, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you got to know tone. Okay. <laughs> I play piano. You know? Yeah. I thought I knew you. Mm. <laughs> I you started singing piano? opera when I was younger. Yeah, what, I was in an ensemble. What made you pick the piano uh, for your major if you was already with the guitar and stuff? Well, uh, I picked piano because um, if you learn piano... You can read anything. You learn everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Circle of fifths. <laughs> Circle of fifths, uh, chromatics, mm -hmm. uh, everything, man. So, yeah. Make sure you get that under your belt. Mm -hmm. Now... I'm not the best reader in the world, but I can read. Mm -hmm. It's important. You don't ever know what kind of venue you're going to step up in, mm -hmm. and they're going to hand you some sheet music and be like, okay, sing that like that. Mm -hmm. Right on an audition. Mm -hmm. You got to know how to read them notes. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say you brought... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, with your background, like with music and theory and everything and really learning it and being in it, do you feel like artists nowadays are less well-rounded? Like, they need to learn more about actual music before they get into it? I believe so, and it may not necessarily be their fault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What it is, is that... Microwave. So it hits now. Pop it out. Yeah. Yep. It's quick. Mm -hmm. You know, your record execs, you know, they started it, you know, back in the day. They're looking for that quick fix. You know, that's why longevity music mm -hmm. is not really around like it. You know, needs to be some of these artists is out here right now. In the next two years, we're not going here. In the next mm -hmm. two months, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and you know, that's something we were talking about last night. Um, we're listening to your uh, uh, your projects. Um, 
One thing I appreciate about Lil G is that you ain't try to conform with whatever the trend was. You know, so you always stayed true to yourself and gave us the Lil G sound. Yes, when you ain't doing trap beats, it ain't no shit where you start rapping or some shit like that. And I, 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 All of a sudden, Drake. classic <laughs> artists like yourself, you know what I'm saying, start doing shit like that. Yeah. It started being like, um, you remember on, on Fire Heartbeats? <laughs> When Flash had and then turned into some other shit with the boxing up towards the end, I hated that. With the horseman? With the horseman. Flash and the five horsemen. It's lonely at the top. Oh, my God. <laughs> Worst transitioning career. Yeah, history. man, I, I couldn't do it. I, could, I couldn't do it. I felt like I would be doing a disservice, mm. you know, to my fans, mm -hmm. you know, to my loyal people. Mm. And uh, to my future fans and everything else, because you can't you can't go out here and give somebody somebody you're not, mm. because it's gonna become unveiled at some point. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that with um, having writers write for you if somebody's writing something that you don't 100% agree on? Do you feel like you'll still do the song or uh, turn it down? Um, yeah, you know it's it's always a way to to work out creative creative connotation you know what I mean it's, it's always a way to you know to find that happy medium you know things like that now, I'm, I'm that kind of brother because I, I don't like to turn anything away because you never know you know and if it's you know unless it's just bad bad <laughs> now, hold on. was it something that you thought was bad but it ended up being a hit that you recorded <laughs> now, like that's what that's the point I was getting ready to <laughs> okay. get to okay you know that's why I'm careful about that because you never know mm. Because there's been some stuff that's come out here, you know, and it's like, who did that? Boom, number one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. So with your success in the group, do you feel like you were prepared for how you got, how quickly the fame grew when Silk kind of came out? Do you think you were ready for that level of success, even after being known in Nashville? No. Really? I don't think any of us were ready. What happened, bro? When you realized. Give, What's us up, story? Guys? Give us a story. Silk. <laughs> huh? Surviving Silk. Well, see. <laughs> <laughs> DocuPic coming soon. <laughs> um, you guys still tour, right? You still oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You still mm -hmm. touring together. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yes. They, yes. they book, book, booked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Super booked. Matter of fact, December the 3rd, we'll be in um, Miami. Okay, okay. On the tour, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, we were recording the record. The last song we did was Freak Me. Okay. All right. The last song, right? Church Boys, right? <laughs> Tenors. <laughs> well. <laughs> Is that what happened? Nope. Oh, almost. She did. They were nervous. Rest in peace, hey, mama. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Happy days was the first one we did. I mean, it was jumping. Well, it had to be you, all, all those. But anyway, boom, freak me. Keith, yo, baby, yo, I got this song. You know, I need y'all to come on in here and do this thing for me, baby. You know what I'm saying, baby? You know, let's get this thing going. What's up, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> you get mad at me when I do that, probably. <sighs> you gonna see these, you can probably cuss me out. But anyway, um, Keith, how we gonna do that? Y'all gonna, gonna get up in there and go and do this. I'm trust me, man. You gotta trust. Man, our mama's gonna kill us, man. Right. What are you talking wow, about? Wow, so that kid? was a narrative. Wow. Our mama's gonna kill us, man. So you know when you love you, baby. You just gotta trust me, baby. All you gotta do is just trust me. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm glad we it's trust you. So we went on in and we did it, man. We put that hump dragon on it. <laughs> Number one. Mm -hmm. Out the box. 93. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was when Freak Nick was Freak Nick. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. It you was, had Freak Me doing Freak Nick. Ooh. Crazy. Deranged. Perfect. Nuts. Out of and here. how old are you? 21 at this time? Or 20? Wow. I was 22. Okay. No one man should have all that power. <laughs> I'm curious, did your personal life 
to have an uptick after that came out. Like yeah, you ain't have no girlfriend right then, did you? Huh? Oh. <laughs> 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 don't don't tell me you was that church dude that didn't marry your high school sweetheart and then you was in the group you wasn't him was you drinking milk no okay so you was able to go ahead and be an R&B singer right then you stick and move right <laughs> it went down huh elevator <laughs> basement <laughs> crazy you enjoy the range huh <laughs> <laughs> plead the fifth, just plead the fifth, plead the fifth. I got five on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it was it, uh, it was quite an experience. Um, I remember the first time I was in my brother's Caprice Landau in Nashville, Tennessee, mm -hmm. riding down this road. Happy days came on the air. I had to get out of the car. I parked it. I was running all around the car. Oh. And then when I got to the house, I was like, Mom, Mom, everybody, a song is on the radio. I said, you know, like on the five hard yeah. and they in the bed. <laughs> they ran yes. the <laughs> duck, duck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one yeah. of them moments. So um, then after that, man, we just started. Started hitting, you know, Keith started taking us out places, you know, and he would always put me up to battle against somebody, you know, me against Johnny Gill and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> on live shows and stuff like that. Man, I'm like, what? Oh, He's put you on a spot. Tell the truth. Did you smoke Johnny Gill? I hope so. Huh? Did you? Well, you know, Johnny Gill's a great singer. Oh, he's man. amazing. Yeah, he's an amazing Beast. singer, man, you know. Beast. Hey, but I, I think bro. I held my own. I don't know if I you know, <laughs> killed him or not or whatever, you know, very diplomatic. Yes. I don't know if I get. I've had these conversations with people oh. where we put we uh like you, Tank Johnny Gill, and it was another who is another power singer, and whatnot on. Um, and I, I was up here arguing with this, this white boy in New York about two years ago, we, and he was going so hard for you, so hard for you. Mm -hmm. And then I end up I end up having to give it to him like a year later after I I, I watched um some live uh, concerts with you. Like I, I seen you before. Millions of times in concert, mm -hmm. millions of times in person. I, I'm opened up for you before, but this, this is one performance that you did uh, uh, at a Lakewood Amphitheater, and I was like, you know what? That white boy was right. This nigga, Lil G, got some pipes, man. This <laughs> nigga, you, man. this nigga got everybody. You, I, what, what do you have? Like six octaves? <laughs> yeah, I think it's like that. Yeah. Wow. By six octaves. Yeah. I think it, it might be five now. You know. You get <laughs> 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 Message. No, but anyway, yeah. Do you come from a musical background? Is your your mom um, um, in the business, or was your dad was your dad in the business, or or are you the f first one inside your uh, family to break out like that? I'm the first one in the household wow. to to do it like that. Um, you know, my sisters and brothers could sing. You know, they could sing and everything, but nobody, you know, they did the church thing, but nobody wanted to you know, pursue anything, you know, larger than that like that. And my mother had a golden voice. You know, she was in the choir. So, you know, I played for my mama when she was singing and everything. You know, we had our little little gospel group together, the Jenkins. Oh the Lord. Jenkins family. <laughs> you know, my my sisters and one of my brothers and everything. And we used to sing at church and everything and I was the musician. <laughs> All this kind of stuff. So, you know, it's it's always been in me, you know, my uncles, you know, my uncle and my cousins, you know, preachers, you know, things like that. You know, there are a few musicians, you know, within the, in the family and things like that. But my um, grandfather, John D. Southall, I'm left-handed. So I found out he played guitar and he was left-handed. Hmm. Now... My sister, I play right-handed. My sister and her husband, my brother, Ray, they got me guitar lessons when I was nine years old. So the instructor was right-handed. So he flipped me over. So I took lessons for a year, and then he came to us and said, uh, you know, I can't, you know, do any more for him. He needs a higher-level instructor than me hmm. now. So What were they grooming you for? Hmm? What was they grooming you for? What they, what they was getting ready for you for? 
Did, was it a, some kind of plan for you to be this young and whatnot? What was what was the mission inside your uh, your family's uh, plan for you? What what I was think, that? I think they realized I had a gift, you know, and they wanted to hone in on it, and they wanted to, you know, be supportive of me to keep it going, you know, and to try to succeed, you know, musically and everything and stuff like that. You and know? you wanted to do it. You weren't pressured to do it. No. It's always been in me. I had that tick. I got I, I to go. I got to go. I got to pick up a music instrument. <laughs> the word, word. Give me a microphone. Give me a microphone. Does your family ever pressure you to, hey, so when you going, when you going to do a gospel album? Mm. Well, it's, uh, Funny you say that. Uh oh. Um. Yeah. Especially my uh, my sister mama. <laughs> sister mama. Yeah, we my, all got one. My sister mama. She's the the oldest girl. Yeah. Yeah. And um. So. Like, that's the one who got me the guitar lessons. Her, Beverly, and Ray. Oh, wow. So um, they just kind of nurtured me up under them. Just took me under their wing and stuff like that, man. I go everywhere with them. They'd always have me with them and stuff, you know. So it was fun, but uh, yeah, she's still on me. Um, now I don't know if I'm really supposed to say this right now, but everybody get ready because I'm gonna finish where I started. Mm. Mm, okay. Mm. We getting one real soon. Take that as you may. Okay. Mm. But. It looked like it's going that direction. It definitely looked like it's going in, going inside of that direction. I can imagine you, you know what I'm saying, making the gospel version of freaking you or lose control. Wait a minute, and, Jesus. It, man, you can it's flip any of these songs. Free me, Jesus. Oh you can flip God. any of these Free songs. me, Jesus. Kanye they do it all the time. <laughs> Kanye did it. I mean. You ever seen that before? Like how Kanye and um, the Sunday service, they be flipping all the 90s songs? Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I don't know yet. Yeah, because you, you, know, you know Ray Would you, Charles used to do still it. it. Would you nice. allow them to do that with one of your songs? Hmm? Would you allow them to do that with one of your songs? If you didn't do it? Uh, I want to praise you up I and guess. down. Right. I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I won't stop. Hey. Right. <laughs> Let me read the Bible, baby. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me see. Won't stop. Let me read the Bible, baby. Uh, Your grades don't stop. Okay. Because <laughs> hell is Cause hot. Because hell is hot. Hell is hot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let we on the something. Let me read the Bible, baby. Because hell is hot. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So you said you want to finish what you started. So in the industry... A couple things happened with the label Electra and then Silk. So you made a statement and you said that um, you wanted to step outside the group because there were some things that you wanted to pursue individually. In reference to that statement you just made, can we correlate that you really, what, what's the unfinished business? Well, I started it off, um, you know, with my, my first album, mm -hmm. The Other Side. We, what, what is The Other Side? The Other Side is the real Gary Little G Jenkins, mm. the musician. I produced, I wrote, played all the instruments. You know, I had other people come in and, you know, and, and write with me, co-writers and, you know, co-producers and things like that. But the other side, because I was always known as the crooner and the lead singer of a five-man group. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knew about, like you said, nobody really knows or knew mm -hmm. about the instrumentation, the musicianship and, and all of that other thing. They didn't really know that I produced. You know, I produced on every Silk record mm. and uh, wrote on every Silk record, you know, so, um, yeah, that's it. Wow. With your sound being real, like... I categorize it as like really like silky smooth, like R&B. We don't get that anymore. I feel like the nowadays R&B, it starts sounding like rap almost. Like, do you think like, are there any artists that you listen to now that's like, okay, that's kind of like our sound back in the day? 
I love her. Okay. Because she played the guitar? That too. Yeah, that, that's one too, but it's just her overall mm -hmm. musical ability, you know, her vocals and everything. She's got an old soul. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, and she's young, beautiful, you know, and smart, mm -hmm. you know. Nationwide is on Very your smart. side. Come on now. Mm -hmm. That's her? A check. Yes. Her did that? Yes. Get out of here. Money. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, wow. you know, I'm, I've, I've always said that there's room in the industry for everybody. You know, it's just that some, you know, need to learn their place. Mm. <laughs> you know, some need to hone in and stay on their place. You know, not to put yourself in a box, mm -hmm. you know, because you can always have a creative flow with anybody, you know, in the industry that doesn't do what you do. Sometimes collaborations are some of the firest things that come out of the music industry, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm a firm believer in that. But, um, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a few of them out here. Uh, you got this new kid, uh, 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 sounds like Marvin Gaye. October London. October London. To yeah, he's hot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I listen to everything. I still listen to hip hop. Mm -hmm. What you listen to? <laughs> Normal day in your car. Huh? Normal day in your car. What you popping in? Uh, and I, I'm having a tendency to listen more to the older hip hop. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, you know, but I still get into that. You know, I I can get grimy sometimes. You know. <laughs> You know, I even produce tracks like that. You know, I, I have a, a couple of With the uh, on hip hop it? tracks and things that I'm, you know, that I got in the bag. Sure enough. You know, I'm going to try to push them out to somebody, you know. Okay, yeah. listening to Young Thug. Don't ever push it yet. Don't ever push yourself into a box, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. Tennessee got a lot of big hip hop artists that's um, taking over right now. Like, they ain't really been on a map this big in a while, probably. I can't even really remember. Um, do you have any of them that you think might be your favorite or you might see having longevity in the game? It's a, it's a, it's a few of them out of Memphis. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, uh, Glorilla and... Ski. Sexy uh, Red. Sexy Red from St. Louis. Money. St. Louis. Glorilla. Nah, Glorilla. Yeah, Glorilla. Money bag, yo. Money, Money bag. bag. Yeah. Money like, bag, yo. It was a lot of them. Yo, got it. Yo, got it. Yeah. Young Dolph. Dolph. R.I.P. Dolph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Young Steve. Yeah. You know, I think, I, think, I think there's some longevity there. I think they're going to be around for a while. Mm -hmm. If they keep doing what they're doing, you know? And, uh, matter of fact, hip-hop is the quickest way to venture off into movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything. You, you, you see what's happening? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's... It's kind of harder for us, you know, R&B guys, you know, now. But I, I always say, I always give homage to hip-hop, too, because hip-hop came from R&B. Right. 100%. That, if you think about it, Freak Me was hip-hop and R&B. Really, it was. Mm. You got to put me on to this. Okay, Freak hey, Me was. don't you understand that I want to be a nasty man. The verses was rap. Okay, you you, you, you rap. Yep, it's rapping. It's rapping. <laughs> yeah. Definitely rapping. Yeah. I see what you did right there. Uh huh. When you ventured off, you were doing like a lot of theater. You, you were like a part of. You worked with like Tyler Perry, like Medea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How was that? Family reunion, man. Yeah. That was a great experience. Yeah. Working with him, man. Yeah, it, it, it was really great. You know, a lot of people still to this day, couldn't be talking about. It ain't over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, G. Hey, G. It ain't over. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I still get, you know, uh, uh, accolades and stuff yeah. you know, from, from that. Uh, and I've done a numerous amount of stage plays, you know, worked with a lot of, a lot of different uh, playwrights and things like that over the years. I started doing that with Michael Matthews in 97. Mm -hmm. See? So. How many plays you think you done done up to that? Because when, when, when me and you got on the phone, you was, you was right in the middle of doing a play. Right. What? 
You was on. Uh, you was in the play with uh, my homegirl uh, Andromeda. Yeah, she's a comedian. And I think it was what's my man? They got that song. Um, Is anybody lonely, Sir Charles? No, it wasn't Sir Charles. It wasn't his play. Uh, man, I did. Let me see, Mama's Boy. I just did um, child support. Man, I can't remember. <laughs> but child I, support sounds like I, a good play. I was about to say, <laughs> what is that about? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor out of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. My bro, my uh, uh, homeboy, Kerry James, uh, wrote a play called Child Support. I did the uh, theme song for it. Um, about the ins and outs of child support, mm -hmm. the rearages. Yeah, yeah. How they get you caught up with the rearages and everything and stuff like that, you know. And woo, it's yeah, it's a dope play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you gonna see it coming around in the future. You gonna yes. see it coming back around. Yeah, you got so kids. We're gonna do some of that. Yeah, but you know he got about how fifteen. Kids? Hey, man, how uh, many kids you got? Y'all got, got kids, right? How many kids you got, Gary? Dose. Okay. okay. You ever been on child support? <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. You're married, right? Me neither. No, no, no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm divorced, but my kids came out of my marriage. Though. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. you See? Go. You did it right. Exactly. Yeah. That's that church right in you. That's that. Yeah. Come on, man. We got to stop putting them. Don't be putting put no stereotypes on my man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can't have no babies out of weird lot. Do Come you on. Feel, do you feel like your music sometimes drove a narrative that you didn't necessarily live? Like... People would think because of Freak Me and all the different songs that you were highly sexual. He is. I mean, yeah, but but do you think that it may have been a little bit more, you know, exaggerated than the truth? Or? No. Well, you know, everything is going to be sensationalized in a way. So you just have to be ready for it, you know, and just let it, you know, be what it is. So you embraced it then? Yeah. He I, was responsibly sexual. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. That was good. <laughs> you yeah, gotta well, that, be responsible with it. That's all. That was a good question. Five, five, five. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, yeah, two beautiful girls, nice. Garen and Zana Blue. Do they want to be in the business? Well, my daughters can sing. You know, my oldest daughter can sing a little bit more than my youngest daughter, but she's very creative as well. And uh, I was. Uh, started to work on a project. I'm going to take her country. Mm -mm. I was just about to ask you about that after you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, produce a country album for her. I like that. So yeah. coming out of Nashville, mm -hmm. you just, of course, it's the country city, the country capital of the world. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, because uh, I was going to ask you, was you, did you ever think about doing a country album? Yep. Still Do you got some songs in the cut already? <laughs> You, you know he do. He looks like he do. <laughs> I see a Kima Show collab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think? What, what do you think is most misunderstood about country music? Because a lot of people think that it's so different, but it's a lot like R and B. Black people created country. Yeah, it's folk music. Yeah, yeah. The slaves. Mm -hmm. It goes all the way back to that. You know, uh, folk music is the first country music. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that was. And that was us with a little guitar and a little washboard, whatever, you know, a little box, you know, do a little beat with mm -hmm. things like that. And wooden box, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. that's where it came from. Stomping your feet. And I'm eating from you, baby. I want you to come that's with me. True. Take a ride down the street in my horse and catch. this dizzy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Watch this. Oh, smokestack lightning. You know what that is? That's a. Uh, Don't you hear me crying? Woo. Yeah, Howlin' Wolf. Woo. Howlin' Wolf. Yeah. Come on, man. Wow. God damn it. How, how did you catch that right off the rip? <laughs> DJ Come on now. <laughs> you be DJing some country shit? I DJ everything except opera. Oh. He get around. My dog, we gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> he get around, man. That's what's up, man. So, so yeah. let's talk about, uh, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the G7 okay. project. Let's Because me and Playboy was talking yeah, about it last night. We've been waiting night. on it since like 2021, man. You got a date? <laughs> I'm ready to hear it. 
Well, you you singling us to death. Yeah. <laughs> that, the other side, the other side was crazy now, but that was well, over you, a decade dog. ago. So we've been waiting for this G seven to come, man. Thank you, dog. And like yeah. I was telling you earlier, don't say nothing. Oh, just make that sound. That's my cut. You don't have to talk. Just make the sound. Girl, huh? shut the fuck up. <laughs> You hear me? I love that song. The sound you make before you about to scream out loud. Come on, man. Mm. Okay. Uh. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. I just put up today Inside Out from G7 No Parole. Yeah. Now, the first single that came out from that was That's My Baby. Yeah. And uh, I done pretty good. And I did a video for it. So I'm getting ready to try to uh, do a video for Inside Out as well. And uh, so maybe in about two or three weeks from now, I'm going to release another one. Mm -hmm. Two or three weeks from now, I'm going to release another one. I'm going to keep it going and keep it going until I get every song from that thing out. And uh, the meantime, while I'm doing that, i got another special surprise for y'all that I'm going to do. Talk about it. It's going to be a seven. Song, EP. Ooh, okay. Sexy. Oh, I see what you did. <laughs> number of completion. I got you. Bringing it back. Okay. Lucky number. And. And that's not all. It's going to be a remake album. Ooh, that's daring. That's that's pushing the envelope a little bit. Something needs to be said. What you remaking? Mm hmm. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> put us on. What I see where you're going with it. I'm brewing. I see, but I see, I see exactly what's happening. What are you doing? I'm in the dark. Is it somewhere in your mind that you feel like, although you've had the blessing to work with so many amazing partners, there's something about you when you do a project and only you that only you can accomplish. Is that feeling in that narrative anywhere? Because I feel like there's a part of you that feels like it still ain't been done right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm sort of a perfectionist. You're a perfectionist. That's what it is. I'm Aquarius. Aquarius. Oh, it's you in your head. <laughs> and my name is Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and I like a woman who loves me <laughs> for me. <laughs> So you prefer like your solo work to when you were in the group? You prefer just kind of like doing things yourself, making sure it's what you want it to be? Yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, being in the group, I love it. Mm -hmm. That's my, that's my fam. That's my business fam. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Never going to go away. Silk will never die. We still got the five original members right now. Mm -hmm. You know, but I believe that there is a, uh, prongs on the tree, you know, the branches mm -hmm. point different ways on the tree, mm -hmm. you know, but the root is, is still there. The Trump. roots and the bark is still there. Quick question. So when you uh, get booked uh, by yourself, mm -hmm. are you able or allowed to perform the silk songs or you can only do that when they book silk? That's a good question. <laughs> yes. So the other members don't get mad if you take bookings by yourself and, and sing the silk song. Yeah, we we've had our you know mm. we've had our situations, but see, but what I've done is I do it in a way as to where not to interfere. You like know, change the beat or something with that. Make it know, a little different. I do medleys. Medleys, mm. yeah. just run them together. I yeah. do medleys and things like that. You know, where you hit it and quit it. Yeah. You know, I do my parts. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. on those songs and things like that, and then sometimes, well, I got one mix that's um, it's called the Munchies mix. <laughs> the Munchies, huh. mix. yeah, and a uh, whole different track. It's not none of the tracks from the Silk music, but I've infused it as to where I do some of my most popular parts of the song in there. Make There's sense. so many layers to you. Like, you're a true creative. Do you paint? Do you do anything else outside? Because you're a creative. I feel like there's something else you do that people don't know about. Yeah, I can paint a little bit. Okay. I, I draw a little bit. So okay, <laughs> I thought so. Things like that and stuff. Hmm. She's very intuitive. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, 
What's one of the biggest misconceptions about you, Lil G? Ooh. I'm kind of like an open book. You know, you get what you get, you know. You get what you get. You know, I don't, I don't need strangers, but I, I don't want people to think I'm a fool either. What you mean? I'm nice. Mm hmm you're very caring, very sharing, very giving. But there's that tick button. You cross me, or you treat me unworthily, you know, in something, you don't, you might get that two piece. <laughs> Why, what, what, don't take your kindness <laughs> for weakness. Hmm. Don't, that's it. Don't take my kindness, you know, for weakness. I'm not blind, dumb, deaf, or stupid. I've been in this industry for years, 30 years, as a matter of fact. Mm. And in those 30 years, man, what, are you, what is the, the best advice you've ever gotten? And then what's the worst advice you've ever gotten? Woo. The best advice that I've gotten would have to be to stay true to your craft, number one, and then number two, no matter who's put in positions to take care of your stuff, still check them. Stay on your business. Mm -hmm. In the background, you know, don't Watch don't them. micromanage or anything, Watch it. you know, anything or micro anything, but just know what you know. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We wow. got a couple minutes. <clears throat> Situationship. I got a card game here. Uh oh. I want to ask you a couple questions. <laughs> Oh no! I don't even know what I'm gonna ask though. I'm gonna just pull them out. <laughs> whatever, random. whatever we get is what we get. Entanglement situation. <laughs> yep. Situation. <laughs> Shout out to Tanya CEO for this car game right here. The situation ship. Situation ship, y'all. I might have picked some good ones. Man. Okay. 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 Uh. Okay. 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 Here's one. Why are you single? Are you single? Yes. Are you single? Oh, why are you single? Well, I'm not necessarily single. Oh, okay. Mm. I mean, I'm not married. Mm. You know, I don't know what you, you know, what do you consider single? I say you're single <laughs> until you're married. That's what I say. Okay. That's what women what, say. What in, That's what women like to keep their options. Open. I don't. Hold on. Hold on. That's not. I, I don't. I don't agree. I, I don't. Think I say you're you single I, I, until you're married. I'm not I don't be my just out. Keeping from my husband, but some people will say my boyfriend or my girlfriend that counts as being taken. But mm -hmm. but you saying you're not single. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not married. So. <laughs> he, said, he said I'm not married. He said when you file them taxes, you, uh, <laughs> head of household, married, divorced, widow, single, single, check. single check. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> got you. Okay, here's one. What's the corniest thing you've ever done while in love? Mm. While in love? Mm -hmm. hmm. Corny, corny. You know, let's define corny real quick. Whatever corny. he thinks is corny. P corny, is, a lot of people think lovey-dovey stuff is corny. Like real R&B shit, doing some R&B shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they, I think the new people call it simping, mm -hmm. but it ain't simping. It's just being it's a gentleman. Love. It's going out of your way. Right. right. Yes. Just to give you some, de some context. <laughs> I, I can't necessarily say I did anything corny. Well, yes, I did. Don't hold back now. Come on. <laughs> Come on, let it out. Mm -hmm. I took a ring out of Cracker Jack box and said, will you marry me? But I was How just How old were you? That was last year. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. That was last year. They don't got them there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Message. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just <laughs> no, I was, what was I? I was like. Nineteen. Okay. Oh yeah. That's cute. Yeah. That's cute. That. Yeah. That was cute until he hit it. 
<laughs> you know I was just bullshit. You know, you know we done engaged off this cracker jack. <laughs> this shit is not real. Okay, we're going to end with this one. It's a cute game. It is. It's cute. Mm. In your past relationships, what lesson has stuck with you the most? All right, now. This is hard. I like this. Communicate. Okay. Be honest. Communicate and be honest. I think that's it. That was a lesson for you? You were bad at communicating? Yeah, you know how some of us men are sometimes. You know, we, we don't talk a lot, right, fellas? <laughs> right, but you know, I'm, I'm expecting a little G. Uh, <laughs> R&B. I, I be talking. I be talking, too. Yeah, we, I'm... Coming from here, you know, as an R and B singer, I imagine that y'all be excellent at communicating and saying mm-hmm. exactly what's on your. Is that one of the misconceptions about R and B singers? Must be. that women. Yeah, it, it right. could be. Yeah, mm-hmm. that y'all just y'all just just like us. They put it in the music. Yeah, just I mean, just like niggas that don't sing. Yeah, because not only because you know, sometimes we just don't want the confrontation. Mm-hmm. We don't want to hear all that. Definitely. You know, we we roll we roll like. Simple. Have you have you ever uh, sung to a woman uh, the first time you met her to try to win her over and get her? <laughs> oh, I'm like sure. Ah. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's a given. <laughs> and what did before you say? or after your success? Uh, before. before, 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 yeah. So you didn't do it after after they already knew. Oh, this little G, you didn't sing to girls anymore. They they used to ask me to. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, they used to ask me to do it all the time. You know. Would you say this for me? That ain't you. Say it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me say something. You know how they do. Yeah. yeah. How y'all do something. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. Hey, look, this is always something I'll be wanting to know about. When you get your first big check, what you what's the most ridiculous thing you ever bought? What what's the Ooh. stupidest shit you ever bought? Wow. Man, that was so long ago. I can't even remember what it was. Let me see. Was it a fur coat? I was, was it a, a leather outfit made out of alligator skin? <laughs> or was it a water bed? Uh-uh. <laughs> water. One of them big in my bedroom. <laughs> was it With a steam ring? I've got a brass water bed. <laughs> I have an Italian chef named Vinny Stratagaccio. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I can't think of that, man. <laughs> you, so you always been pretty good with money then? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I've been pretty good, you know, because coming up, you didn't have a lot of it. Mm-hmm. You know? this, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, you know, I had to, I had to learn how to. You were saving from the from the get grain. Yeah, because my mama raised seven of us by herself. Right. Oh, wow. Her and my grandmama, you know what I'm saying? You know, pops wasn't around, so you know, we had to, you know, do it. And you know, and I watched my mom, you know, she she did her thing, bro. <laughs> you know, so always, you know, pay homage to that and I always said to myself, you know, I would never be that dude to depend on a woman to take care of me. You know, I would never, you know, I would always try to be the one to take care of. A woman. Them. Yes. That's right. You know, and uh, I learned to be frugal, <laughs> you know, at an early age, you know, because during my time of being a church musician and doing being in the club on the weekends, you know, the monies the that I was kids. making and stuff like that, you know, I would splurge here every once in a while, I'd take my little girlfriends out somewhere or something, you know. And do some things like that, but most of it I was trying to, you know, do something more with it. You know, ended up buying my own car, you know, things and stuff like that. You know, so you you have to, you know, and I I always said, you know, that no matter how far I went in the industry, that I was gonna stay grounded and rooted, you know, like I was even at church. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's what's been able to help me maintain. You know, and to be my same person as I am today, 
you know, because I wouldn't let the industry overtake me as to where I just went butt wild crazy with it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've always had that thing in the back of my mind. Watch yourself stay on the ground, bro. You know, and and it's, it's easy to do. You know, really quick to lose yourself in this industry. You know, y'all know that, right? One hundred percent. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's been a battle. It's been a struggle. Sometimes you want to slip. Yeah. Hold on there. Wait a minute. Let me tell you something. Okay. (laughs) You know. (laughs) But anyway. So. What keeps you grounded? What keeps you? You know what I'm saying? Like I, yeah, level. I'm and and from from slipping and jumping off. Stay prayed up. You know, and I remember where I got all my talents from. Uh-huh. And if I don't use them right, you can snatch them right away from me. That's right. So that's what that's what keeps me there. What is it that's kept um, that same DNA in Silk? Because we see a lot of groups that don't even communicate no more. They make it past the second or third album. But you guys still have the ability to come together for the business. What what what's in that chemistry mix? We brothers. Mm. You know, and we've learned. Even though we don't have all the same blood, we really do. Mm. You know, because we decided to come together, you know, as five individual men in order to do something to catapult our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we've been able to do that. You know, it's been kind of rough. You know, sometimes it's been like like a roller coaster, like a slope. Mm -hmm. You know, but then you get to a point where after you get through that, you know, you get through all the hustling, the bustling, the bumps and the bruises and the pain and everything. If you can get through that, you can get through anything. Everything else is like butter. Mm. You know, so we we learned how to learn each other. You know, individually, you know, I know what he gonna say. I know what I know what he likes and don't do that because he don't like that. You know, he don't like that. And you know, then. You have to have a diplomatic, a diplomatic approach, mm-hmm. you know, to everything. You know, you take votes on things. You know, I might be our voted. Got to suck it up. Yeah. You know, Jimmy might be our voted. He got to suck it up. Mm-hmm. You know, and so we learned to do that. You know, we've had our knockdown drag outs. Everybody does it. You know, but we learned how to get past those. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 almost like I was told, at one time, you never take your life out on that stage. When you go out on that stage, you're a totally different person. Because those people out there are who are keeping you paid. Mm. Or who are supporting you. Mm -hmm. You're not supporting them. That's where some artists lose it. Mm -hmm. You know, they be like, I'm I'm (laughs) losing Let it be two people out in that audience, hmm. and you don't get your check. Hmm. So, so we learned that man. We, we could be in the dressing room, knock down, drag out, pop, 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 silk. Right, ain't missing a beat after the show. <laughs> you know, and then we hug it out. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, man. I love you, man. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's, That's one of the benefits of being in a five-man group that you can do majority rules. If three say left mm-hmm. and the other two say right, everybody got to go to the mm-hmm. left. Yeah, I was in a group true. once, and it was four of us, so we used to always be split down the middle, <laughs> and we could never get on the same path. That's why the reason why it didn't work. That's real. But you needed one more nigga. Yeah. <laughs> have to call in the manager or the, or the road manager. Johnny. <laughs> Come here. We need to vote. <laughs> Did you guys ever um, have any tension in like between girls choosing on one of the members and the other guy wanted that girl or something like that? What? I'm sure it was enough to go around. <laughs> Mm-mm. Hey man, that's what they. I heard why B2K broke up and a lot of people broke up for the stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Girls yeah, that's that's true. True. Some people put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> He, yeah. said, oh, he said he ain't gonna tell you about that Some shit. Some people put it out there. That's what he just no, said. Me. He said you ain't gonna t- he ain't gonna tell you about that shit. <laughs> nah. See, we are firm believers in she let you, you bet you. Right. Wow. Okay. 
Why okay. your face looks so serious though? Can we zoom in on okay. his face with that? He, he just said some pimp shit just now. <laughs> that was some pimp shit right, right. His If she let you, what? Well, well see, 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 see what happens is when I go into Pimpology 101, you know, I have to have that serious face on my face. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, y'all won't take me seriously. Y'all won't take me seriously if I don't have that, that serious look on my face. You know what I'm saying? If she let you, you betcha. You betcha. God damn. Woo. Your girl chose me, nigga. <laughs> we can get into some gentlemen's handlers like gentlemen. We, you know, Luckily, we ain't had none of that. Okay. Got you. But you know, that's, you know. Yeah, okay. yeah. When you, when you have the, and, the, and the right mind frame with people, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it helps with your congeniality. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hey, that's the word for the day, guys. If she choose, whatever she choose, you got to let her choose that and keep it moving, baby. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I'm gonna finna end on this note, man. One guy that I think, that, and this is, let's let me know. He always reminds me of you when he performs. He performs like you, Bruno Mars. Ooh, Bruno Mars. That's a good, that's a good correlation. Do you ever, do you see yourself in him? Have you ever met this guy? Haven't met him yet, mm. but I was told and I heard. That in his sound checks, sometimes he does some silk music. Mm. Huh? Yeah, I can see that. You, that's how you stretch yourself out, mm-hmm. <laughs> doing some little G runs. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, hey, you bro, that. thank you for that. Man. If you can, if you can pull off a little G run, <laughs> you can sing. You can sing. Man, that, little G. That Bruno Mars, man, it's a beast. Total beast. Much respect. Much respect. You think uh, Silk played a, a part in Silk Sonic? Mm. Mm. <sighs> there it goes. A little shifty in here. I'm not sure. I kind of want to say yeah. Do it. <laughs> I mean, do it, do it because you're, 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 you're you guys are so influential. Yeah, because you know it would be, it would I would be proud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, for them to have considered us, you know, like that for us to be a part oh, of man. their makeup, mm-hmm. you know, in their thought thought process. Yeah, so I hope so. <laughs> hey, Bruno, <laughs> call me. Let me know. <laughs> Last question for real: If y'all was to do a versus, who does Sook do a versus with? Mm. Jodeci. Ooh. Well, you know it. Well. He said it with his chest. You heard what he said. Lil G, thank you for coming to New Jack Thriller City. <laughs> thank Is you there for having me. Is there anything you want to say to New Jack Thriller City before we get up out here, my boy? I want to say to everybody in here in New Jack Thriller City, you guys are the epitome of the quad. Hey, I've had a ball up in here, y'all. It's it's so laid back, and it's so natural, you know, and you can have fun. You know, everybody's, you know, they serious with it, but they crack their jokes and everything, and they allow you, me the opportunity to do that, man. This is a top-notch, top-notch show, man. And man I, hey, say and that I sound bite y'all. right there. I need that shit. <laughs> and, and DJ. T-Rex. DJ T-Rex. <laughs> Sick with it, okay. <laughs> Sick with it, y'all. Say, like, you gonna get some referrals. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hopefully they'll have me back. Yeah. Oh, you damn right. <laughs> hey, as a matter of fact, we gotta do a. Um, I was just up there. To, we, we gotta do like do like a, li- a listening party um, version of this show where you come in and you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. you play play the songs, sing the songs and shit. You know, what I'm saying let us help you promote this. Mm-hmm. You know Message. You, you yeah. like that? Message. All right, cool. There yeah. it is. Well, like I always say, you just can't say you're really something. You got to be, man. Look, G, we up and we out of here. Let's take some pictures. T Red. Let's go. Let's do it. Woo, y'all trying to get me. <laughs> <laughs> we almost had it. <laughs>